I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Monday, July the 6th, 2015. A rocket was fired at southern Israel from the Islamic State's Egypt affiliate Sinai province on Friday. It landed in an open area at the Eshkol Regional Council, close to the Israeli-Egyptian border. There was no injury or damage reported. The rocket follows two days of violent battles between the ISIS-linked group and Egyptian forces in the Sinai Peninsula. Meanwhile, Israel's security agency, the Shin Bet, announced today that it had arrested six Israeli Bedouin men, some of whom are school teachers, from the town of Hura in Israel's Negev for their alleged ties to ISIS. The Shin Bet said the arrests have taken place over the last two months. The United Nations Human Rights Council on Friday endorsed the UN Commission of Inquiry report on Israel's actions in Gaza last summer, which accused Israel of possible war crimes. The resolution to adopt the report passed by a vote of 41 in favor to one against, with five abstentions. The United States was the only member to vote against the resolution. The report does also accuse the Palestinian side of possible war crimes, but focuses heavily on Israel. The resolution to implement the report was drafted by the Palestinians and Arab states. It ignores the Palestinian offenses, like the Hamas rockets fired at Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu slammed the UNHRC's decision to, quote, wrongfully condemn Israel, which acted to defend itself from a murderous terrorist organization, while ignoring real human rights violations from countries and groups like Iran, Syria and ISIS, he said. In his remarks Friday, Netanyahu thanked U.S. President Barack Obama for standing with Israel and voting against the resolution. Jewish organizations here in the U.S. also thanked the president for his support and condemned the resolution's passage. Executive Director of the American Jewish Committee David Harris said that the UNHRC once again showed its obsession with Israel, noting that it has adopted more resolutions against Israel than all other nations in the world put together. The Anti-Defamation League condemned the, quote, boundless hypocrisy of the UNHRC. National Director Abe Foxman said once again there is willful blindness to the actions of the Hamas terrorists who provoked this with their rockets aimed at civilians. Once again, Foxman said the Human Rights Council speaks in one unified voice against Israel for defending its citizens against ceaseless acts of terror while ignoring human rights violations elsewhere around the world. And Jewish groups welcomed the decision made last week by the Episcopal Church of the United States not to adopt a law to divest from Israel. On Thursday, the church's House of Bishops voted down a resolution promoting the divestment at the church's general convention in Salt Lake City. Benebrith International praised the church. They said by continuing to prefer responsibility to simplistic partisanship, American Episcopalians and so many Christians worldwide signal their interest in encouraging genuine calm, dialogue and reconciliation. The American Jewish Committee praised the decision as well, saying they, quote, welcome interreligious partners who genuinely champion peace for Israelis and Palestinians. You may recall earlier last week, the United Church of Christ voted in favor of divesting from companies conducting business with Israel in the West Bank. The divestment measures are just the latest efforts of the BDS, Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions Movement, that seeks to delegitimize the state of Israel. The Israeli government yesterday repealed the conversion reform law it had just passed seven months ago. The law was intended to make the conversion system in Israel more accessible, letting Orthodox rabbis with a more lenient approach to the process set up their own conversion courts, in particular to help the immigrant population from the former Soviet Union. The law was adopted last November. However, the new government voted to overturn that law. Chairman of the Jewish Agency for Israel, Natan Sharansky, spoke out against the reversal, saying the courts were trying to help tens of thousands of immigrants and their children who require conversion due to their, quote, desire to join the Jewish people in a more complete and recognized manner. Sharansky released a statement saying we cannot accept the fact that a matter so vital to the future of the Jewish people and to Israel's existence as a Jewish state 
is subject entirely to the configuration of the coalition at any given time. Sharansky said that other means were now necessary to, quote, preserve the state of Israel's Jewish character and continue the historic process of ingathering the exiles. And taking a look now at our programming for tonight, Monday, July the 6th, at 7.30, Brett Stevens discusses the rise in European anti-Semitism and how to combat it, speaking from the 2015 AJC Women's Leadership Board Spring Luncheon. At 8 o'clock, former Israeli ambassador to the U.S. Michael Oren discusses issues raised in his controversial new book, Ally. At 9 o'clock, Mark Golub sits down with Israeli journalist Ari Shavit. And at 10, meet Michelle Obama's first cousin once removed, Rabbi Capers Founier, who discusses his conversion to Judaism, his work in Africa, and what the black Jewish experience is like in the U.S. And coming up right after this newscast tonight, Deputy Managing Editor of the Jerusalem Post, Carolyn Glick, her address to the 2015 Jerusalem Post Conference in New York City. And that's the JBS News Update for Monday, July the 6th, 2015. I'm Tisha Bader.